In today's video, we are taking a look at canned air. What are they actually used for? What can they be used for? And testing a few popular myths. Hey guys, before we start this video, we wanted to hop in and tell you about our latest limited edition t-shirt. In case you haven't noticed, every month for two weeks, we put out a limited time shirt. And after those two weeks, the shirt is gone forever. So for this month, we are putting up this classic design. So go ahead and jump into the description below to get yours before it's too late. Don't do that. And so in today's video, we wanted to take a look at canned air. You guys have probably seen this stuff before. It's used for cleaning off dust on computers, things like that. And yet, everybody knows it. Everybody's familiar with it. If you've ever worked in an office, you've probably seen it. Uh, other things that you can do with it that we're just finding out. Air rockets. Here's the basic idea. We've got several cans of compressed air and we're gonna test out some of the things that we've always wanted to learn about them. How much is in them? What is in them? Are they flammable? and how well can you use them to freeze stuff? There's a movie that I like a lot, it's called 10 Cloverfield Lane. In the movie, a character uses a can of this canned air, they turn it upside down, spray on a padlock for a few seconds to freeze it, and then they use the can to just smash the lock open. That's how they bypass a lock. We want to try that along with some of the other things, so. Let's explain why that works. Why would you turn the can upside down to freeze the lock? Uh, so these cans contain something that's called tetrafluoroethane. I mean, it's specifically, it's 1112 tetrafluoroethane, which is used for a lot of stuff. I think most commonly, at least to a lot of people, canned air, and it's actually the refrigerant in the AC systems of most cars. So this same stuff that goes in your air conditioning, when you hold the can vertically, the warming vapors expands, comes out the nozzle at a fairly high pressure. You can use that to just blow dust off of stuff. However, when you turn it upside down, the liquid is then directly in contact with the nozzle and it doesn't spray out as a gas, it sprays out as a liquid, which then very quickly vaporizes. But you can actually see this, especially with lower pressure, like this is splashing, splattering onto my glove. <laughs> it's hitting the it's, paper and disappearing it's immediately. It's very cold, even on my hand in the glove. We can have it on the paper. You can see if I do it slowly enough, it even just drips out. But as Callie said, as it warms up, it just dissipates. So that's why you hold it upside down because then you get this liquid coming out. And the reason it's used as a refrigerant is the same reason it may theoretically work for breaking locks. When you have something compressed and it decompresses a lot, it cools down a lot. This is a very compressible liquid to gas and so you get a big change in the temperature. So this coming out is pretty cold. Uh, even through my glove, yeah, that was a little uncomfortable. Now. And so we may do a little bit of test with that as well. Lots of things to explore. Yeah. If your keyboard ever looks like this, I don't know how your keyboard will get to this point, but um, don't We've got, worry. Yeah. <laughs> Simulated keyboard grime here. <laughs> We're gonna real quick test how well this works for cleaning off a keyboard. You do want to lift the keyboard so the can stays vertical. So that was simulated in sort of best case scenario because it was just like all dry powder that we just put on. There's no like oils from our hands or anything. However, this does let us show off the concept of how it's supposed to work. It's like a power washer, but with, oh, don't. <laughs> Why? We're gonna see just how many balloons we can fill with just one can. Or is it less than one? Is it less, yeah, I don't know. I wanna We're find We're gonna out. see how much balloon we can inflate with a can of canned air. I'm gonna make sure that we keep the can upright. I'm worried about the cold causing problems with the elasticity of the balloon. So we're gonna try not to freeze this as we go. We've got a balloon attached and uh, I think the tape is yep. holding it on nicely. So now we're gonna see how much of this balloon. This can hasn't been used at all yet. Mm -hmm. So just pop that tab off and then we can see how much we can fill a balloon. If it fills all the way, we'll switch it out and get another balloon. It's working pretty good so far. Yep. I think we're gonna have more than one balloon though. How cold is it right now? Negligibly. Negligibly. Yeah, it doesn't really feel all that cold. It does seem denser. Oh, that's possible. Oh yeah, wow. Right? That's that's not just a little bit, like that's considerably lighter. or heavier. It reminds me of sulfur hexafluoride. Yeah, I don't think it's oh. quite as dense as sulfur hexafluoride, <laughs> but it's that pretty is, similar effect. Yeah. 
the rate at which the balloons are filling is slowed down a lot. And I think it might be that we've cooled the can down so much. I explained a tiny bit when something goes from compressed to decompressed, it cools down a lot. And the cans have now had so much leave them that everything inside is much less compressed. So the can itself is getting cold, but when it's cold, it doesn't try to expand as much either. And so we're gonna try and get some warm water to set the can in to see if that speeds back up the rate of flow, because this is obviously going very slow at this point. <laughs> oh yeah. Is it working better? Much. Awesome. At least for a second. Mm -hmm. We've got one empty can and like seven and a half balloons yeah. full of this air. Wow. But that they is... keep wanting to leave. Yeah, there's there static electricity and, and balloons are weird shapes. So they're trying to escape, but our very heavy balloons here, this is, that just falls to the ground. In case you were wondering, one of these cans, and it says it is 285 grams of a Super Duster can, you're gonna get seven and a half balloons. It's true, these do come in different sizes. Mm -hmm. Some of them are only like three ounces and they're just like these tiny little cans. They're good for like cleaning one keyboard and then they're gone. But yeah, these are pretty mid-range size Seriously. cans. Seriously. And yeah, seven and a half balloons, like that is definitely more air than I thought we were gonna get out of these. So that's pretty entertaining. This stuff seems to react a lot like sulfur hexafluoride in weight. I want to see if it does something that sulfur hexafluoride can also do, which is put out flame. If you displace the oxygen and you starve a flame, you can put it out. I want to know if this stuff will do it too. That's assuming that it's not flammable. And I got to say, I think it is not flammable because it says non-flammable right here on the can. <laughs> that's a clue. To me, that's an indication that it's not going to burn, but I am going to test. So I got a lighter, I'm just gonna spray a little bit of through, pretty gentle. Well, that seems oh. to be doing something, oh. oh. Whoa, I'm sorry, what? Non-flammable, huh? That was a double flame. I need that to happen again immediately in my life. I also wanna see if it burns as a liquid. Doesn't really seem to burn more as a liquid. No, it, I don't know, so it's weird. It like puts out fire, but also catches on fire. Sure. I'm gonna fill up a cup full of our heavy gas. All right, I think I've probably filled it up like six times by now. All right, if I may. Boom, <laughs> that went out great and that was very beautiful. quickly. All right, so now I wanna try, I want to, if this is again like sulfur hexafluoride, smoke will actually sort of settle and bounce on top of it. So let's go and fill that, yeah, fill that up. I'm gonna just drop a match down into it. Let's watch how it reacts. Right Immediately out. Immediately out and Look at that beautiful floating on spiral. top. The air inside, you can tell, was still moving around from when I blew it in with the straw. I don't know why it forms tiny, tiny little rings in there, but it does. Oh, it's so pretty. Yeah. All right, we've seen how much we have in terms of volume when it's uh, a gas. Now, what we were trying to avoid before is what I'm gonna try and do on purpose. I'm gonna turn this can upside down and see what happens when I fill it in the balloon. I think it's gonna be cold enough that the latex is going to lose all its flexibility, which is exactly what Callie was trying to avoid because we wanted it to expand. But now, I'm just gonna see what it does to it. So we've got a pool of it down at the bottom. You have vapor already coming off of it. But it is also filling it with gas at the same time. Awesome. Whew, that's cold. All right, so we do have a good pool of it down here at the bottom, but as that pool is warming up and vaporizing, our balloon is continuing to expand a fair amount. When we put balloons in liquid nitrogen, they just kind of like solidify. Yeah, like they they, have they're done. No flexibility left. So it's cold, but I wouldn't say it's liquid nitrogen cold, and that's making me think that what we saw in the movie 10 Cloverfield Lane might not be possible, at least not on a good 
new lock. We should um, still try. We have a lock. We do. This is as similar as I could find from the quick little shot we had in the movie, but it looked like about this same style. And it's actually a fairly thin shackle yeah. as padlocks go. So I think if it's going to be possible at all, this is going to be a good one to try it on. Let's try and spray it and see and if we can use the can, the can to shatter it. Before we go watch Callie freeze that lock and try and smash it, I wanna see what's inside one of these cans. So this can is now empty. Nothing happens when I hit the trigger. I can actually dent the can just with my thumbs. It's almost entirely devoid of propellant at this point. So I'm now going to drill a hole into it to make sure all of the propellant's gone. And then I'm going to just try and cut the entire can in half with a hacksaw. I wanna see what's inside this can. That seems to be about the entirety of what this product is. There's no straw, which explains how you get gas if you hold it like this, and liquid if you hold it like this. It just feeds right in, but there's nothing else to it. Let's go see a lock being smashed. Maybe, hopefully. All right, so I'm just gonna hold the can upside down, spray for about five seconds on the body, and then do I hit it with the top of the can, or can I hit it with the, the bottom? The bottom, yeah. Perfect. She, she sprayed it like okay. this, and then just Smash. started beating it. Perfect, all right, here we go. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> it well. Well, okay. okay. That was gallium, guys. We molded <laughs> our lock and we made one out of gallium because we've done experiments with frozen gallium before and we know it shatters really easily. So we wanted to recreate the effect of it. And it looks really cool. And for a movie, not a bad way to do it. That'd be a great way to do it. Yeah, yeah. although maybe a little too easy. Let's go ahead and try with the real lock now. About like that? About, yeah. Okay. Nope, I'm gonna break the can. Let's try again. That's fine. Let's try that. Okay, nope. We're gonna need a hammer. I think you're out. Yep. Trade ya. Well, Keep something going. broke. Nope, that's just straight concrete. <laughs> that was a pretty solid hit. I think it's bent. I'm gonna try one more time here. One more time, I want this to break. All right, I don't think it's breaking. I did bend it. So Nate. Yeah. Can you? Break a padlock by spraying dust off on it. With the padlocks we have and the dust off we have, we did not make any progress with the rear lock, only with the gallium lock. Which was awesome, and it looked really cool. It actually looked very, very similar to how it broke in the movie, so I'm not sure what they used as a prop, but that would have been a good way to do it. A gallium lock getting hit with dust off, and a real lock getting hit. Here's your difference. Guys, that's not all. You know we've always got more for you to see. Go ahead and click that box up at the top to see our latest video, and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.